Thank you very much for that introduction. Uh, as you know, the theme of the uh, conference this, uh, this day is focused around systematic approaches to uh, bringing IoT to industry. And I am the Chief Technical Officer, the CTO of the Industrial Internet Consortium, uh, founded about six years ago uh, with five global companies, around 200 uh, companies strong, who have been working on this for some time. What I'd like to do in this talk this afternoon, and thank you indeed for inviting me, is to let you know what that is so that you can gather some ideas that you might be able to apply in your own efforts. The fact is that six years on, we are in the so-called trough of disillusionment. Uh, this diagram is the so-called Gartner hype curve. And what it shows at the beginning, which you see at the bottom where it says technology trigger, is a whole lot of technologists getting very excited about a technology. Uh, going to conferences, setting things up. Everybody needs to know about IoT or IIoT or whatever the particular analytics, predictive maintenance. I don't know. Make it up. Everyone needs to know about it. Everyone gets excited. Not that many people actually know what we mean. But what happens over time, of course, is that we talk and we come to some common understandings. We can work out some various elements about what it is uh, that actually makes sense and what might work, but we're still technology focused. After a while, and of course it takes time for different technologies to rise up this curve and go down again on the other side, we hit the peak of inflated expectations. Everyone is now so excited about this, nothing can go wrong except for one minor problem, namely that we only have uh, installations in lab laboratories. We don't have a lot of people making money. If you ask someone where has it been deployed, they say, oh, I have a case study over here and a proof of concept over there. What they don't have is a true installed base. And this is an issue because the mission of the Industrial Internet Consortium is to accelerate the development of the industrial internet. And to be fair, I think that we've done a lot so far to come to common vocabularies, common understandings about just what it is that the industrial internet is and where and how it can be applied. We have written lots of papers, 1,200, 1,500 pages maybe. Uh, we do have a number of test beds going. We have done quite a lot, but, and this is a big but, much of it is technology focused. But when you actually go out and look at industry, what you'll see is that different companies are in different places. Some are going down, some are coming up as they begin to understand what technologies they need. And the question now is how exactly do we get to the point that we can get widespread adoption? And this is a topic that was discussed some years ago now, 1995, by uh, Jeffrey Moore in a book called Crossing the Chasm. And this is a version of his famous picture. At the beginning, you get early adopters, people that are interested in technology for technology's sake, and people who wish to deploy technology because they can see value in it. But you don't have widespread adoption. So imagine now that you are the CTO or the CFO or CEO of some company, and someone comes along and says, I have this wonderful technology, it's really good, I've got proof of concept in the lab, I've got this, I've got that, and we really should uh, invest 10 billion tre uh, yen in bringing this to a project in your company. The typical response to that is, well, yeah, I see what you're saying, but do we have any examples? Can you show me a case where this has been known to work? At which point the technologists will talk more about technology, and we'll talk more about the kinds of things that have been done in the lab. What they don't talk about is where the money is made. So then your CXO goes a little bit further and says, well, okay, I understand kind of where you're coming from here, but if we just had one example that I could use to take to the boss and the board and say, this is what we're going to do, I would feel much more comfortable. And then the technologist says, oh, I have some great examples in healthcare and in automotive. And the factory owner says, that's lovely, but they don't apply to me. And this is a problem. Every industry 
needs specific examples to that industry to make a good case to the people who make the money decisions, who actually decide to adopt technology in their factories, in their industries, they need examples in that industry. In other words, every vertical needs a way to try and cross this chasm between the early adopters and the mainstream. And what we in the IIC have done with our membership, we have about 4,000 people on our roster, is three main things. The first, in each of the industries, and so far only two, manufacturing and transportation, we have established an industry leadership council. The purpose of which is to allow industry to tell us what they need. So for example, our manufacturing leadership council has said, we like what has been done with your reference architecture and your security framework, but we really need to see it applied in manufacturing. You can see it's the same story over and over. So the Industry Leadership Council is simply a way of bringing those uh, industry experts into our organization so that we can help them. We're trying to build that bridge that crosses that chasm. And that's the first thing that we have done. The second is to publicize a so-called Industry Connect program. The idea here is to take certain technologies that have already been deployed in certain industries. For example, we have one uh, associated with connected safety. Uh, it instruments workers in manufacturing or in a mine or whatever. It instruments them so you know where they are, you know if they've fallen, you know if there's some toxic chemical about, and then those sensors gather the information and determine whether there's a problem. Now that technology is relatively general. It is focused on worker safety. But you can at least show, well, we did it in mining, and you can see it might work in manufacturing. Do you want to try it? We have the technology. If you can give us access to your factory, we can deploy it. The, that is to say, not IIC, of course, but our members who are technology providers. And then you can get benefit from it, and then you can go further. So we have a number of these uh, industry connect sorted out at the moment. Connected care is one of them. Uh, video retail is another, etc. We're trying to expand that out, moving from the technology. And then last, we need a way actually to get things done. Uh, these first two are really about getting information to cross the chasm. This third point, the accelerator program, is about actually doing things. And there are three parts to it, and I'll describe them in turn as we proceed. So the Industry Leadership Council, as I said, is a collection of industry experts, strategists, systems architects, usually one level down from C, uh, senior managers, senior technologists, to identify industry-wide issues. For example, I gave you one about manufacturing. We'd like to see this specialized so that we can deploy it more accurately uh, in our particular factories in our manufacturing vertical. We, as a manufacturing industry, want to see this. Can you help us? And so drive adoption, influence best practices, and so on and so forth. This is quite a broad list. I'm not going to read them all. What I am going to say is that when we bring those experts together, they bring real experience and real needs and pain points that matter to them. And if you are going to get adoption in an industry, you have to show that you can relieve some of the pain. And you have to be able to do it also with someone that is respected. If I talk to somebody on the street and say, well, you have this particular piece of work going on in this factory and I made your job easier, eh, who cares? If the CTO says it, that's different. So that's the kind of thing that we're trying to achieve here. The Industry Connect program is a facilitated service which is available to non-members. The idea here is primarily around problem discovery. So here you are, a user of technology in industry. You come from industry. What you want to be able to do is to find out how you might use some of this technology and make some sense out of it. So that includes things like ideation. It includes things like uh, workshops around 
things that you might actually be able to do with the technology specific to you, not general statements. And what the IIC, the Industrial Internet Consortium, does is allow the user of the technology to say, this is what I'm looking for, publicize it internally to our technology-driven members, who then say, I can help in this area and this area. And the purpose here is to ensure that the users of the technology are not swamped by lots and lots of salesmen. They don't want that. They want to solve a problem. So let's see if we can understand what that is. So this is a service both to industry and to technology providers because it allows a buyer to find a seller, a seller to find a buyer. That's what we're looking for. The third part is an accelerator program, and this is all about execution. And you will recall that I had three sub-bullets there. I'm going to describe each of these, but first, let's talk about why there are three. The reason there are three is that when you take a pair of users and suppliers, and you look at what drives them, it's always different. Sometimes, it's all about the technology. An industry user wishes to use a technology that they have seen applied elsewhere, they want to bring it out, they want to see what works. In that case, what we're interested in doing is finding out how we can deploy it successfully in that case. And for that, we have built a series of test beds. Today, IIC has 26 test beds. We have had around 32, they have come, succeeded or failed and gone away, but we now have 26 active test beds, and they are primarily technology-driven. They, of course, always do connect to some, well, not always, but almost always connect to a particular vertical. They nevertheless begin with the technology. So they are technology in search of a place to deploy it. The second area that's interesting is the test drives. This is closely related to the same kind of thing that we do with the Industry Connect program, except this is an actual implementation. So where in Industry Connect, we're trying to connect providers and buyers. With the test drive, we are publicizing existing technology and helping the uh, user to find that technology and then to do something. So it's in some ways similar to a test bed. It's a real system. It's out there, it's doing stuff, but it's with existing and a mostly proven technology. So when you're technology-driven, you're trying to work out what technology works. When you're solution-driven, you do have a solution. Now you're trying to apply it and adopt it. Now the third main area of interest are challenges. And challenges are simply competitions. A user of the technology and some providers come together and say, industry has this serious problem. We want it solved, we don't know how to. And governments, by the way, do this. There was a challenge uh, some years ago uh, done by, I believe, the Department of Defense in the US, uh, a race, basically, for automated vehicles across the desert. And they offered a prize to the winner. So the goal here is you deploy your technology, you make it work. What we're looking at here is real systems. The ones that we have so far both happen to be construction-oriented, doing things like being able to understand information around your building, how to use it, improve it, and so on and so forth. The key thing to understand here is that these are competitions. This is the time for you to bring out your photos and take the picture. I'm not going to go through it, but what it does here is just describe some of the features of uh, the Accelerator program in terms of what it does, how long it lasts, and who participates. So what we're trying to do then, in summary, is to allow the users of technology the resources and the ability to test that technology in place. So they may have issues like shifting market requirements or more sensors of different kinds or lots of data analytics. And what we want to do then is to develop interoperable and scalable solutions to enable them to get product innovation, increased agility, et cetera, et cetera. 
And the way in which we do that is through these resources. And if you look, focus attention only on the middle column, you'll see that I've talked already about the Accelerator program. We have at hub.iiconsortium.org a couple of assessments that allow you to understand how mature your organization is and how mature your security is. We have the foundations. I've mentioned these 1,500 or so pages of documents with architectures, best practices, and so on and so forth. And finally, community. Our initial community was based around the technologists getting together to define requirements for standards. That's when I say ecosystem here. I have added industry councils, which we've talked about already. So we are trying to bridge that gap in a systematic way to go from industry issues to digital transformation. One last comment. We will be in, uh, in Tokyo next, um, in February, next February, here at Big Site. Uh, this is the Smart Factory Expo. Uh, lots of visitors and so on, a number of concurrent shows. And uh, we will have people from IIC uh, in Japan uh, here doing that. If you're interested, uh, please contact us. And this is the way that you can contact us. This is my family name at II Consortium. Uh, the person that runs most of these programs is named Howard Cradle, so again, family name at II Consortium. And you can find us, of course, on the web. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>